How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I'm a second year medical student currently studying in Canada and then approximately seven months or so I gotta start applying to residency. Now I'm not gonna lie to you there's been a lot of thinking lately in terms of how to go about picking my specialty that I want to do for the rest of my life but for the sake of today's video what I want to try and do was make an evidence-based list regarding some information about these supposed best medical specialties that you could possibly do when choosing your specialty. AKA we're gonna be talking about e-roads and the lifestyle specialties. Now before we get into it I just want to go ahead and take this opportunity to let everyone know that today's video was proudly sponsored by the channel's amazing sponsor Ken Hub. More on them in just a little bit and also just want to serve as a quick reminder that if you guys did enjoy today's video please go ahead and let me know by leaving a like on today's video and if you have any questions comments about anything at all doesn't even have to be related to this video go ahead and leave those down in the comment section below. Now let's take it from the top there's a very old saying here in medicine that if you want a great lifestyle it's as easy as following the road to success and in recent years we actually took road and turned it into e-road we added on emergency medicine but at the same time I feel like we've just been adding e in front of everything these days but nonetheless the e-road medical specialties are a list of five different specialties that stands for emergency medicine radiology ophthalmology anesthesiology and dermatology and stereotypically these five medical specialties have been known to promise some of the best lifestyle all across all of the different medical medical specialties in terms of flexible work hours, great pay, and then also happiness at work. But is this actually the case? That's what I want to go ahead and take a look at today. Why did these medical specialties specifically get singled out amongst all of the other possible medical specialties? And what is the current status regarding the legend of the E-Road medical specialties? That's what we're gonna be figuring out today. Now, first things first, we'll go ahead and we'll start talking about pay because that's often one of the first things people associate with the lifestyle specialties that they actually have very great compensation associated with them. So when we look at the most recent physician surveys from the CMA's official website, what we see is that it, within the e-road medical specialties, emergency medicine doctors reported billing $390,000 per year. Radiologists also billed $390,000 per year, whereas anesthesiologists billed about $450,000 per year, dermatologists billed about $410,000 per year, and we'll get to ophthalmologists in just a second. But first, how does this compare to the rest of the Canadian medical specialties? What we see is that when you actually compare the supposed e-road specialties for the most part to the other medical specialties there are some of the surgical specialties as well as some of the internal medicine subspecialties that bill from the upwards of the 400,000s all the way up to the 600,000s but there is one e-road medical specialty that stands out and that is ophthalmologists that report approximately $810,000 of billing every single year. So I guess in this case, we have to start off by giving one point to the e-road specialties, but that's, you know, big win for ophthalmology in that category. The next thing that we have to consider though is the number of hours worked per week in each of the different specialties. Now, in a previous video, I looked at all the different Canadian medical specialties and we found out that on average, the different specialties work approximately 63.5 hours per week. But where do the e-road medical specialties stand? Starting off with emergency medicine, we see that on average, these doctors worked about 52.25 hours per week. Radiology worked about 58.25 hours per week, ophthalmologists worked 55 hours per week, anesthesiologists worked 62.5 hours per week, and dermatologists worked 53.5 hours per week. And in this regard, right across the board, we see again that the e-road medical specialties are in fact working less hours per week on average compared to the rest of the medical specialties. So I have no choice but to give the e-road specialties another point in terms of possibly being some of the best medical specialties to pursue. But right here, we're actually gonna see our very first downside of the e-road specialties, and that is that they are crazy competitive to get into. Emergency medicine, ophthalmology and dermatology specifically come consistently in the top four or even three most competitive medical specialties in terms of the CARMS match with ophthalmology actually being the very most competitive medical specialty to match into as an approximate R value of 0.51 meaning that for every two medical students that want the spot of an ophthalmology residency only one of them are actually going to get the spot and emergency medicine was close behind at 0.62 super competitive even in this year's cycle that the dead is still not out yet. Uh, dermatology 0.56. 
uh, anesthesiology 0.81, and then radiology actually wasn't all that competitive. It was 0.95, but still there are less spots uh, for radiology residency than there are actual applicants that are applying for this residency. And now is actually a great time to go ahead and shout out today's video sponsor, Kent Hub. For those of you, especially those of you that are looking to get into some of the more competitive medical school residencies, or maybe you're just trying to get into medical school at first, you're trying to set yourself up right from high school or undergrad or wherever you are in your current education, you guys need to go ahead and check out Kent Hub. They are a total anatomy hub based entirely online. They have everything from practice questions to amazing lectures that are broken down with timestamps that you can easily go ahead and search any topic in anatomy, skip ahead to the exact point in the video that you wanna go ahead and learn about and Ken Hub will have you covered. So go ahead and go check out Ken Hub if you guys are interested. There is a link in the description below. You're gonna get 10% off their premium service or go ahead and just check them out on YouTube for their hundreds of free videos. There is literally no reason for you to not go ahead and check them out. But now moving back to the topic of hand in terms of whether or not the E-Road specialties are really the best best medical specialties that you could possibly imagine to, we have to look at the final metric, which is what do the doctors that actually work in these specialties think of in terms of their personal work and life balance. And this means actually taking a look at the human factor, setting aside things like their salary and the number of hours worked, what do these specialists think about the job that they're doing? And we start off with emergency medicine where we see that only approximately 56% of everyone working as an emergency medicine doctor is actually happy with their current work-life balance. When you look at radiology, that actually goes down to about 48%. When you look at ophthalmology, it goes way up to 68. That's a trend that we've been seeing in ophthalmology. Ophthalmology might actually be the best specialty, but we'll get back to that. Uh, anesthesiology dips down to 55%. And then surprisingly, or at least to me, dermatologists on average across all of them that actually respond to the survey only reported feeling like they had a good work-life balance in about 37 percent of the time so now that we've seen all the data where do we stand how do we go ahead and wrap this all up regarding the legend of the e-road specialties i mean yeah uh, th there's no denying the evidence when you look at it the e-road specialties on average are working less than the other doctors they're making just as much if not way more in some cases and for the most part many of them actually do have a great work-life balance as is described by the people that are working there. The one downside to many of these specialties is that they're very, very competitive to get into, but that's to be expected with something that's in very high demand. But at the end of the day, what does this really mean for me or for you? And I'll just use me as an example because I don't really know you guys too well on the other side here. But if you would go ahead and take me and put me in an ophthalmology residency, even though it is the most competitive residency to get into, I would have a terrible time there because I am not interested specifically in the field of ophthalmology. Someone might really enjoy it, but it's not for me. And I think that that's something that you're gonna go ahead and figure out for yourself. There's this big trend to just chase the most competitive, most prestigious E-Road specialties when you're picking your medical specialty. And I think that's totally blown way out of proportion these days. And a lot of times I feel like we're missing the value of personal preference. Like for example, if you were to go ahead and take emergency medicine and you hang out around the emergency room for long enough and you talk to some of the doctors there, some of them will say that they absolutely love the shift work aspect involved with it. Going to work, working their shift, going Going home but at the same time if you ask some other doctors just in general, they say that the reason why they can't stand working in the emergency department is because they hate the shift work aspect. Waking up uh, and going to work, starting at midnight and then finishing at eight o'clock the next morning is fun when you're in your 20s at first, but then after when you're 40, 50 years old, uh, you know, might not be for you later on. But all right, guys, that is gonna be the end of the video today. That is all of the current data in 2021 regarding the E-Road specialties here in Canada in terms of what might possibly be the best medical specialties to match into, at least from the statistical standpoint. But in my case, it is no secret that I'm most likely going to be ending up in either emergency medicine or family medicine. I'm going to take you guys for the entire application process as that comes along in the next few months. So hope you're looking forward to that. We will see you all in the next one. Everyone take care.